Well, I had come to Princeton initially because I enjoyed the fact that the humanities were very well linked with the sciences in terms of the liberal arts education. So, and every, everything was so inextric inextricably linked that you could study across all ranges and get all kinds of ideas. But to know that the sciences could also follow that same integrated outlook was very interesting to me. As a science major, there are a lot of requirements and prerequisites, and I want to do things outside of science as well. Integrated science like just manages to merge a lot of those into one class, and it is a big time saver, um, just course-wise. So that was the main, the, like the biggest draw for me. I just saw the um, description as like, oh, like one course, physics, chemistry, computer science, and then the next year, pretty much all of the stuff I need for biology. Um, and I thought that was really convenient. It has definitely been intense and it has definitely been amazing. People who say that you don't make friends outside of integrated, that you're always with them, that's overstated. Um, but it's certainly true that you spend a lot of time with integrated science people. It's definitely physics in a way I haven't done it before. Um, deriving everything, working from the ground up with calculus and then applying it to, to other fields, which really, um, I think the most integrated part of the course is the lab. Just because the lab like will be physics based in a way, but the applications to biology and chemistry are immediately apparent. For biology to advance, we need people who have a more quantitative education. We're trying to give people a different kind of introduction to the sciences, which we think will help them as they go forward to do whatever it is they want to do. I've been finding it really interesting to learn about how math can translate across all these scientific fields. For example, learning about how differential equations can describe uh, Newton's laws, but then you can also use differential equations to describe the complexity of DNA. I wish that all Princeton students could spend some time thinking about and talking about the fact that we really can describe a lot of the things that go on around us by writing down equations. How do you make a weather prediction? You can wave your hands and say, I don't know, there's the radar map and a big computer. But fundamentally, what's going on is that there are equations. And you know, what's that computer doing? It's solving some set of equations. And why do we believe that these are the right equations? Why do we expect that if we take those equations and run them forward in time by a day, then we'll find out when the storm is going to hit? It's just not like any class I've ever taken, because it's basically the teachers getting together and teaching everything at the same time. They think, okay, mathematical models, now let's teach how that relates to science, and not like how it relates to physics, how it relates to chemistry, but science. And so you will have a lecture about a mathematical model in physics, and the next day you'll say, okay, so this is how it relates to chemistry and biology, and the next day you'll be talking about genes, and then after that you'll be talking about, you know, spring um, momentum or something. So it's, it's a very different approach to teaching and a different approach to science in general, and it, you think about everything in a very different way, which has been really interesting.